Here's a little picture I drew, brothers and sisters, of uh, Tony Chopper looking cute and cuddly and fluffy like he does. And uh, if you like this type of the drawing and more, do you remember to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. One Piece, Chapter 153, Herolux Cherry Blossoms. <laughs> Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the tantalizing and just awesomely heartfelt tale of One Piece. Uh, our last chapter saw things, of course, winding down a little bit over here and, um, and really just sort of seeing, you know, everybody come back together now and everybody sort of getting filled in on what has happened, what has gone on. Um, you know, the, the main things were Dr. Kareha wound up trading uh, Nami the key to the, um, the, the armory, I guess you would call it, uh, the weapons locker or what have you, the weapons room of uh, Waffle's Castle uh, in exchange for, you know, wiping the debt clear for, uh, you know, her, her services as a doctor helping Nami and, of course, uh, Sanji and everything like that. So um, the chapter ended off, though, with uh, Luffy getting, uh, you know, getting Chopper to join him. And, and he was, you know, and the funny thing is, and I didn't even realize this, and shame on me for screwing this one up, but between reading some comments that I just recently did and then rereading the chapter again, I realized how awesome it was what Luffy has done and everything else. Luffy needs to have a doctor on his ship anyway, right? It's an important thing, okay? And he wants to have a musician as well, but uh, which, which we've gone back to, but I didn't realize until rereading this chapter and then of course you know making uh, the connection with the comments that I've been reading and everything else that Luffy didn't even realize that Chopper was a doctor that that Chopper has that type of you know that, I, I guess I just assumed because of the fact that he's with Dr. Kareha and everything else that Luffy just knew that he was a doctor but he doesn't and you find that out towards the beginning of this chapter the chapter starts out and, um, and and it starts out with, uh, you know, with, of course, where we left off. You know, it, Chopper has decided that he's going to join the crew. And uh, and things start off, and everybody's getting the ropeway ready to go back down. You know, we've got Usopp, and, and Usopp, and, and Nami's there, and, and Sanji. They're, they're, they're all there. And um, and they're talking amongst themselves. And then uh, said, oh, yeah, okay, we're going to get, you know, just as soon as Chopper's done saying his goodbye or telling Dr. Correa that he's going to come with us, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we'll set sail for Alabasta. And then, uh, you know, they say, oh, and then Sanji says, oh, does that make you happy, Vivi? You know, and of course she's excited. And then she says, yeah, now especially since we'll have a doctor on board. And Luffy's like, huh, doctor? And when I first read that, I was like, what, is this kid stupid, you know? But then making these connections, I thought, no, he didn't, he did all this stuff because he had respect for Chopper, because he's just a decent human being, and because uh, obviously everything with the skull and crossbones and the flag and what that meant he, he didn't do this at all just because he wanted to... I mean, of course, he wanted him to join his crew because he thought he was cool. He was this neat reindeer. But had no idea that he can actually contribute something that they need, which is being a doctor, you know, and, and having a doctor on the ship. So I, I thought it was really good. So we then go and cut to the inside of the castle, and uh, Chopper comes up, and he's kind of apprehensive about approaching, um, you know, Dr. Kareha. Uh, we first see her, actually, and she sees Dalton in bed, and she's like, hey, there seems to be a lot less patience in the infirmary, you know? And Dalton says... Yeah, they, they, they didn't listen to your orders and they left, you know, <laughs> Nami and Sanji. And she's like, oh, damn troublemakers. So uh, Chopper walks in and he's like, hey, uh, doctor, I just wanted to let you know I'm going to go with them and set sail to be a pirate. And she's like, no, no, you're not. She's like, oh, you know, and first she tells him, she says, you know, go help the others with the cannons, you know, because they're, I guess, moving cannons into place from that weapons room. And he's like, no, you don't understand. I'm going with them. And she's, so this banter goes back and forth. And, and it's it's very funny how it plays out because she's just like, you, you, you idiot, you're a reindeer. You can't go and set, you know, set sail with them. You're not the, so finally he gets angry, you know, and he's just like, I'm a human too, you know. <laughs> and I just picture him like, I'm a human too, lady, you know, you old back. And uh, so she, she goes and starts, she's like, you know what, if you're going to go with them and join them, it's going to be over my dead body. So she starts chasing his ass, <laughs> coming after him, and he's just running. Oh, <laughs> you know? And she's like, a big blubbering idiot like you, you can't be considered a human, you couldn't be a pirate, you're going to get yourself killed. <laughs> and he's, yeah, that may be, but that's what I want to do, you know. And uh, and again, it's just, just real funny, that's kind of the meat of the whole chapter, is her chasing him around the castle, and then uh, it, it going to the outside of the castle and showing up, uh, you know, some of uh, Dalton's men, some of the villagers that are getting the cannons ready in place, and they're like, what the hell is that racket all about, you know. <laughs> so... Chopper winds up running from her all the way through the castle and getting out. He goes and uh, and, and lashes himself up to her or gets himself, you know, uh, tethered to the, the sleigh that I guess he pulls her down the mountain in. 
And it's kind of funny because if you go back about 10 or 15 chapters, this is a minor thing, but it's something I caught up on. Everybody talked about Dr. Kareha when she was first introduced about how she you knows she lives up at the top of the mountain and sometimes at night she's seen and it looks as if she's being like pulled like Santa Claus by his reindeer flying through the night. Now everybody that uh, at least knows about, believes in, has believed in, whatever, Santa Claus, you kind of, you know, you get that picture that you see from the side where there's the moon, the full moon, and then you just see like the silhouette of Santa Slay and his reindeer, you know, and him going ho, ho, ho. Well, it's really cool because um, we wind up finding out that you, that white ropeway that she had, that rope that was painted white to, to blend in with the surroundings in the background, what she would actually do is have Chopper pull her on the sleigh down that ropeway. And if you remember, it was tied to her old house anyway. So that was her secret way of getting it. But villagers would see that in the night and think, oh my God, this witch is coming down from the heavens, you know. <laughs> I just thought it was very funny. Then you wind up seeing a, a little bit later a page... A page that depicts that uh, that scene that I was just explaining, but with, of course, um, you know, with the sleigh being pulled by Chopper, of course, and no Santa Claus, the, the Straw Hats. So he's he's hauling ass, right? And he's coming towards the Straw Hats by the ropeway, and he's like, everybody get in, hurry, you know? <laughs> he's basically, you know, she's crazy, we gotta go. <laughs> so they're all jumping in and everything, and as they're taking off and, and getting onto this, this ropeway, and he's running right down the ropeway, and the sled is just, you know, balancing precariously on it, I guess, from the momentum of him pulling it forward, you just see the side silhouette and you see the you know the silhouette of the crew, and then Luffy's just kind of hanging on to the back of the sleigh because like he was the last one to get in or didn't fully get in as they were taken off, and uh, and again just real funny because you go in and when you see that silhouette, I picture I think a Christmas and it's a snow island too, you know, so you got snow everywhere, and uh, so you know they they go barreling down and get to the bottom of it. Um, and, and it's really kind of cool because they get to the bottom and they're just pretty much nonstop, you know, just trying to get to the ship, you know, moving as fast as they can. And, um, and then Kareha, we go and we see, we see this kind of flashback and forth of, uh, Chopper going and start, starting to kind of doubt himself and think, you know, Dr. Hiraluk told me that his, uh, you know, because when he was up there telling her that he was going to leave, uh, Kareha said something about, oh yeah, that quack and all the time he wasted on his research. But, you know, Chopper was under the impression from what Hiraluk said right before he, you know, left to go see Kareha and then, of course, go up and pretty much commit suicide up by Wapple six years ago, that he, that that reaction that had happened, that was the, the, that was the solution to his research. That was everything. So, you know, is Chopper's like doubting himself, you know, he's starting to think and doubting what was told to him, I should say. And he's thinking, you know, was that just a lie? Did he just say that to make me feel better that his research, you know, had finally you know paid off type of thing? And, um, and, and you really, you know, you don't know for a couple of pages and you start to think, okay, well, you know, is, is this poor reindeer human thing? Is, is he just been living a lie? You know, I mean, was he deceived? Was he fooled by the doctor? And, uh, and it's kind of cool because then you go and you see uh, back up at the top of the, the mountain, you see Dalton come out and he's by Kareha and, uh, and, and he sees what had happened, you know, and, and obviously he, you know, saw it firsthand, you know, her chasing him out of it and attempting to kill him and everything else. And then she goes, yeah, you know, and it's just something about, you know, it's stupid rare he, he was he was just uh, he was just an, uh, an adoptee anyway you know what i mean just like a basically like a wayward animal or a, you know he's just adopted and taken in you know like a stray and uh, like she has no feelings and she's like besides that you know i don't like uh you know i don't like goodbyes and uh, you know or tearful goodbyes something like that and you can see that the old bag actually tears up a little bit you know uh, so what she did was just, you know, it was one of those things where she just drove him away. It was similar to the Sanji uh, deal, you know, on, on the Baratier. If you remember, all the cooks started treating him like crap and, and just basically trying to get him to, to leave. And then, of course, you know, they, they were all very kind to him and it was heartfelt and, and very tear-jerking when he did leave. But this was very similar in the sense that she was basically just like, you're not going to do that, get the hot air, because she knew that he would anyway, and she didn't want to have to have like a tearful, you know, goodbye. So so we go back down to Chopper and, and seeing him, and she's she says, ready the cannons to fire, you know, and uh, so they're like, okay, whatever, you know, and... Uh, we wind up seeing this flashback of the powder that uh, that was given to Kareha by Kiraluk, and he said that this is the you know the, the, this is his research, this powder, and they fire these cannons, right? And they fire them out, and everybody's like, and then everybody in the villages are like, oh no, we're under attack! You know, <laughs> recover cannons are firing. It must be Wapple. You know, first they think it's fireworks, and they think it's Wapple firing on them. People in the village still have no idea what's going on, you know, and uh, they don't know who won or lost or what have you. Uh, and then of course we go to you know to Luffy and crew and uh, and Chopper and they look up and you know there's these explosions happening right and and you see snow and stuff coming down and of course it's black and white so you can't depict any color in this but it does go back to Kareha and and kind of the flashback and he says when this uh, when this powder you know mixes with snow 
if this red powder mixes with snow, it, it makes these brilliant pink snowflakes, right? Now, I don't know if this had to do with his cherry blossom thing or if this is just kind of a... I, I don't know. At first, I was thinking that, that she was firing these things out and there was going to be some kind of seed that he had come up with, you know, that, that formula to be able to create cherry blossoms. Um, but obviously, I mean, it looked very pretty, all these snowflakes coming down in the air, you know, being pink instead of just the normal white. Um, but I don't know if there's any significance to that, and I'm really kind of looking forward to seeing if that pans out at all. Did he just spend 30 years and wind up coming up with this powder that just dyes, you know, dyes the color of snowflakes? I mean, certainly it would change people's mood and everything else, but he was all about like the cure-all and trying to heal the, the country and everything else, but maybe it was kind of like he's trying to heal the hearts of the country, you know what I mean, and, and get everybody to just sort of smile and look up at this wonderful sight. Um, you know, or maybe there is some significance to it. So uh, that is going to be, that, that's how the chapter ends. And, well, we wind up seeing Chopper and he just starts blubbering like a baby again. You know, he starts crying and he's just, you know, so excited about it. And, <laughs> you know, just so excited to, to be alive. And, uh, you know, I forget exactly what he says at the, at the end of the chapter over here. But it's uh, it's something, I don't know if it was super, super profound. But I know it was kind of cute what he said because he's just blubbering like a little, like a, I shouldn't say a baby. That's not. That's not nice. He just he cries a lot. So there it goes. And he goes. Oh, no, that's what it is. He's just like. Wah! And then we get like the word bubble from Kareha, and she's like, "Go on, you foolish boy." You know. So she's. Uh, you know. She's sort of just. You know. Passing the torch and saying, "Go ahead and." Go, go live your dreams, man. Go be a pirate. So, But uh, like I was just saying a minute ago before I got distracted, because uh, I'm very much like squirrel, you know. Um, that is the chapter question. If anyone knows, and if it's not too big of a spoiler to tell me, you know, was Hirolux research all just, you know, uh, just, just to make snowflakes pink? Or is there any significance of that? You know, um, is there actually any key to the, the cherry blossoms you know, being able to be grown somewhere on there because I thought that was what, unless I miss him, I thought that's what he was, what he was, you know, aiming for, trying to do. So, um, if you could leave the answer to that question, brothers and sisters, in the comments down below, I would appreciate it. And uh, feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button, if you should think that uh, I deserve it. And uh, and then of course subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching you in the next one, nation. As always, brothers and sisters, thank you so much for watching the videos, commenting, rating, liking, subscribing, sharing, and spreading the word of the nation. Here, of course, is a little bit of a throwback picture of uh, Arlong looking pretty fierce.